Hey guys, what's going on? Um, I want to talk about the importance of being organized and input, output, and bus labeling. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about this is because I think it's really important to organize yourself. Why? To expand on your workflow and help your workflow and leave a lot more room for creativity than navigating around and logistically trying to find things. So this is how I do it through Logic. I mean, you can do it in any DAW, but I'm going to spe be speaking about Logic at this moment. So let's check that out. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave your comments below. And if you want to share it, go for it. I hope this is going to be helpful for you. Now, we all know what a pain it is if, if you got a big session going on, and you got like, let's say, a mix template that's going on, right? So within your mix template, you want to send things to your preset reverbs or compressors or whatnot. And you want to send them to buses, let's say, parallel compression. You want to send it to bus number so-and-so. Now, the thing is, you can do that. But if your session gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and you have all these buses numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and whatnot you would eventually come back to that session or check it out again and, and you, you'll you eventually figure out that where is this bus going to? And you got to navigate your whole template or your whole uh, session at that moment and see where that bus is going to. But if you have it labeled, then you're good to go, right? Um, also, another thing is when you're tracking, uh, it's nice to have all your inputs um, labeled and your outputs labeled. Now, if you got a hybrid setup like myself, I got my whole rack unit back here with preamps and outboard gear and whatnot. I like to have everything labeled. So when I pull up a session and let's say I want to use one of my compressors, uh, my IGS example, uh, I want to use it in mono. I'll just go into my oil label. And there it is, right? I just plug them in. I have a preset and ready to go. On another hand is, um, if I'm using outboard gear besides the in the box, I have labels for everything, for my patch bay particularly. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this, we all have our workflows, and I think it's very important to keep your workflow um, streamlined for your own workflow. Everybody's got their own workflow, and it's nice to have that going on. For my workflow example, with my patch bay, my outboard patch bay, everything's patched into that. Now, that took some uh, some time to put it together or map it out, let's say, before I finalized what is my workflow and what are my ins and outs. So for the analog part of things, I create these little, uh, can you see that? So all my IOs on my patch, this is one of my patch bay labelings. Uh, these are my inputs and outputs. So as you can see, I got them all numbered and the name of each unit or outboard gear is on top or the outputs going into uh, the unit itself as a send and return. And then I have another one for my second patch bay, the 96 one has all that same stuff. Now I got these everywhere in my studio. I even have it on my computer screen over here stuck there so every time i look i miss something out i know where everything's going or where everything's routed and it's on my um rack outboard thingamajing closet you want to call or cabinet and it's also on the back and the reason why i also put it on the back is if i'm rerouting things i can always look at that i can always look at this and know where everything's going so it makes my life a lot easier and simpler to know where the ins and outs now, coming back to in the box, which uh, I have all, also all these labeled in my IO on my logic session, uh, lab all my inputs and outputs for the outboard gear is labeled there. And all the busing and the system of uh, buses or auxes I use is also labeled over there. So I'm gonna pick up and show you my template example, just to give you an idea of why and why to organize yourself uh, within this. As mentioned before, is I want my creativity uh, to flow really quick. I don't want to sit there and worry about where everything is and where everything's going on. I need to mix or I need to track, I need to write 
or whatnot, when I have all of these things ready to go, then uh, it's solid. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> so example over here, I got my one of my mix templates over here. And if you look on this side, so example, this is my channel for lead vocals, lead verse vocals. I usually have a lead verse vocals, lead chorus vocals, which is this guy here. And this is my lead uh, verse vocals. Now on my template, of course, I have everything set up and organized. So I have everything ready to go. So example, if I have my lead vocal over here, if you look at my buses, I got something called VC1, VC4, CC1, CC2, CC3. Now these are my abbreviations for where they're going. These are my parallel compressors, right? So I call that VC1 as verse compressor one, verse compressor four, and CC1 is chorus compressor one, chorus compressor two, and so forth. And then I have for my reverbs and delays and modulation or time-based effects, I got my plate, which is labeled right there, as you can see. I got a hall verb, which is labeled right there, slap delay, uh, a dark delay, a quarter note delay, an eighth note delay, and a modulation. And these are all ready for me to go. They're all bypassed at this moment. But if I want to use it, it's right at the tip of my finger. You know, okay, I want to send this to the hall reverb. There we go. Done. I can audition that and see where it's at. Now, because I'm organized with my template, I know that my hall and all my reverbs and delays are color-coded within this area over here. All right, so that's my plate reverb, that's my hull reverb, that's my modulator, my modulation. I can stick anything I want in there. My slap delay, dark delay, quarter note delay, uh, eighth note delay, and these are some of my outboard effects, time based effects pedals, which I use as well, and so forth. All right, so at the moment, if you want to know how to label your logic session, you just need to go to your mix tab over here and go to I.O. Labels, all right? This will make it a lot more clear. Now, if you look at your I.O. Labels, it starts out with mono, the mono inputs. So I got mono inputs one all the way down to 58. And outputs one through 58, these are the mono, and then it goes down to stereo inputs. So same thing as input one, but it's combined, it's linked together. So input one and two, all the way down to input 31 and 32. Uh, sorry, uh, input 57, 58. <clears throat> and then it goes on to the stereo outputs. So what, what stereo outputs or inputs means, it could, could be a dual mono or a stereo link thing. It depends how you set your workflow up. And right after the inputs and outputs, you go into your buses. So I got like bus one through 32 are empty. I don't have them labeled and 33 onwards until I think 60, sorry, until 83, these are all labeled. All right. Now I'll get to how to label this stuff. So let me just jump in on the buses first of all. All right. Let's start with that. I'm going to start with 33 and onwards. Okay. So my bus 33 is going to my kick augs, which is my kick bus. Bus 34 is going to my snare augs. And then Tom Ox. This is the way I set it up. You set it up the way you guys want to set it up. You know, there's, it, it's up to you. But a good idea is for you to map this out. It's, it's a good idea to map everything out of how you want your workflow. Draw it out. Write it down. Because ever so, it'll, it'll change around. It, it all depends on how you change your workflow or you set your workflow and whatnot. It took me a while to set it to the way I want it. But now I got it all in there. And I'm very... Uh, aware of where everything is at this moment just because of my labeling and how I set it up. So I don't have to think about any of this stuff. Okay, so we'll go back to the IO labeling. So it's a very simple way to do it. If you want to like example, uh, send bus 28 somewhere, I'll just do this as an example, you just click user over here. And then you type in let's say stereo with bus. Okay. Now, as you can see, stereo width bus is quite long. And my advice to you is to abbreviate everything because when you open up the labels on your session, they're not all going to show up. So I'll give you an example over here, right? So let's say I got bus 28 at stereo width bus, which is lovely. So I'll just go to one of my buses over here, example. All right. And look at that. I have stereo width bus. It's labeled here, which is great. But there's a problem. 
Because when you put it out over here, you see that just a stereo. You don't know what it is. I'll go back to bus, I think, was it 28? Yep, 28, 28. There it is. So if I want to label this, it Logic tends to like five or six characters at most. And if you use uh, uppercase letters, it'll use more space. So suggestion, maybe if you want to use one uppercase letter and then the rest. So if I call this example S T uh wide all right let's see how that pops up so if i call this st wide see it comes up as stw right so maybe what i should do but if i do it as and wide i wrote it with a capital so that takes two spaces so what i would do for me to abbreviate it to understand it i would call it stereo uh lowercase d st wid which makes sense right now if i go back to that bus which i labeled as st wide as you can see here and you see that it's st wd obviously you know these terminologies according to what you want so this is how you label your buses and then you set your buses to what you want them in your template example so i know like my vc1 which is for me is my verse compressor one I got a decapitator and a 175 uh, B compressor on it, right? This is always preset in my template. And to also preset, to save your presets is very easy. So you just go here and you save uh, and you save channel strip setting as so forth, so forth. And then you go into your user channel strips here and you have everything there. So if you want VC1 to be example VC1, I have it set as VC1, which means these plugins are loaded in there already. So these come up. But you shouldn't worry about that because once you got your template going on, uh, all of these things will be in your template. The reason why I brought up also, a lot of us are using a hybrid setup with a patch bay. Now, why do I label my I.O.? I'm going to go back to my mix I.O. over here and show you something. So I got input one is my 1073 preamp EQ, which is my outboard over here, right? And then I got my manly core, my LA-2A over here, my force one. These are, these are all these labels that I have here, my inputs and all my outboard gear, okay? My inputs and outputs are pretty much my outboard uh, gear and not my plugins. So input one is at 1073 mono, output seven is at 1073 over here so i know that line output what is it sorry sorry line output uh yeah seven is 1073 and my line input one is 1073 so that's the send and that's the return on the output now why is that why does it make it easy because we all know how to work with outboard gear if you have some outboard gear and you can use them as kind of a plugin within logic so you can go to io over here if you see that utility another io so you can look at this as a plugin but it's actually a routing system that looks like kind of a, a plugin that's set up to route uh input one and output seven uh into your daw and use it as an outboard effect or a processor and over here if i look at this if i want to set it up and i haven't saved it I know that my 1073, if I do this, 1073 there, sorry, my output is 1073 and my input is 1073. There it is, done. An easier way to do that as well to set up and organize your labeling is example. You go to your IO, if it's empty, like that, and you can save presets of your eye, just like how you save plugin presets. So if I go up to manual over here, oh, okay, I want my 1073 one. And look what pops up, my 1073, 1073 i don't have to search it over there done this is primarily working in a, a mix template example right this also helps in your tracking sessions particularly if you're working with uh, outboard gear right you can do it with your inboard and anything in the box as well it's all up to you what you want to do it's just to make life easy and the you know the creative workflow a lot quicker that way so let's go to uh I have a tracking session example opened up and I got all these audio files over here. All right, as you can see, 
So I just enabled or put together four audio tracks, audio one, two, three, four. Now, the thing is, if I have outboard gear running right now, and I'm not sure 1073 is input one, 1073 two is input two and so forth. I kind of haven't memorized at this moment, but if I'm not sure which input is which input, and you don't have an input here set, like example, let's say it's not labeled, and you get this over here. So it says input 33. All right. Do you have that memorized of what preamp you got going on in there? Or would you rather have something that's labeled and say input? Okay, I want my 1073 on input one. Let's say I want to use that for the kick. And I have, uh, let's say my Dakin one. I want to use that for my snare example. Look at that. I got Dakin one and 1073.1. The reason why it shows one here, because 1073.1 is quite a few uh, letters. So it's about one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's why it shows in as one. But I know it is one and two. The rest are pretty much one, two, three, four, five tops letters. So they all show up. So an example here, I have my uh, Manly Force 1, Channel 1. I'll send that to... Uh, whatever a tom or something or or whatnot so all of these things are labeled right here right okay example i want to send this to my empirical labs mike e all right guys i hope you enjoyed this or i hope it helps you out in some way i mean this is the way i do it there's there's many ways to do it right many ways to skin a cat I just want to stress on the importance of being organized in your sessions to keep the workflow fast and moving. You know, the last thing you want to know is like, oh, where's this going? Where's that going? Where's where's all of this stuff going on? I don't know where it is. Rather than, oh, okay, my snare is right there or my snare is being sent to this compressor. Okay, I know that's going to this channel compressor because I have it all labeled, example, to my distressor. And all right, that's it. It's down there. And I know how to navigate that, right? Um and if you have any comments or any other questions besides this video, please leave them in the link below. And uh, I hope to catch you next time. Enjoy mixing, mastering, producing, recording, and all that good stuff. All right. See you later.